unless I sense that you're tired and don't care anymore. Then I say, okay, I'm done. I won't, I won't beat that horse, right? But communicating my verb to help you get it is what I'm passionate about. And I'm, not this, I'm, not, I'm this way about everything, not just about story. And I'm this way about bow hunting. I'm this way about golf. I'm this way about cycling. I'm this way about everything I love. If I will talk hours to you about, okay, here's how you make a better swing when I was really playing golf. All right, dude, you want to talk hunting? Okay, here's how you do it. Man, and I work hours at this stuff because I'm passionate about it. So I practice and all that, and I do these things, and then if you show the slightest interest, you bet I'll help you show you. <laughs> I love it. That's my sweet spot. This doesn't even feel like work. And if I happen to get paid for it, it's like, wow. So if you're at a job where you get paid to operate in your sweet spot, and you're even slightly wise about how you spend your money, payday will sneak up on you all the time. You mean I got paid again? Which I think I got paid yesterday. And I didn't even, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not doing it for the money. I get to live a life that God created me to live. This is awesome. And almost nobody gets to do it. And so it has tons of applications. Then the last one is decision making. Now this is why I started Journey Partner Group, was to make wise decisions. When most people make a decision, what they give you is they give you the circumstances. They say, hey, could we talk? You know, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe, and then they start telling you, you know, all the stuff. That's the circumstances, the present circumstances. But that alone is not enough to make a wise decision. I take the present circumstances, and when people talk to me about them, I usually just say, hey, is it okay if I just kind of, you know, because I can't remember all this. It's your stuff. I can't remember. Can I just make a little, and I, and, oh, yeah, go ahead. And so I take a yellow pad, and I turn it sideways, and I make present circumstances. Then I come over here and I say, hey, what's your negative tendency? Oh, well, let's go pick it up over here. We did that over here, remember? Yeah, okay, and so your negative tendency is whatever, okay, this. And then I say, what are your future goals and dreams? Future goals and dreams. And to the degree that you're a a serious Christ follower, those will probably be informed by what God has already uh, put in your heart to do. You, you've asked him about that. And so you'll list those, okay? In the areas, what are your personal goals and dreams? What are your goals and dreams for your, you and your wife or your spouse? What are your goals and dreams for your family? What are your financial goals and dreams? What are your physical goals and dreams? What do you want to be like, you know, physically when you get older? Stuff like that. And so we just get a number of those really normal, important categories to us out there. Okay, then when you're done telling me all your, per your circumstances, I ask the question, <clears throat> which one of these is driving your decision? Which one is most significant and important to you? And you say, okay, it's this one right here. Then I ask another question. I say, what do we believe about this? I want to I want to live I want to evaluate this most important part of the decision. I want to evaluate it in light of what we believe as Christ followers. Let's bring the faith to this decision we're making right now. Let's don't make decisions in our lives separate from what we have grown up and said we believe our whole lives. Let's live out our faith. And sometimes people will say, you know what, I don't even believe that. And you're getting ready to make a decision based on something you don't even believe. Okay, it, the decision's made. Don't do it. It's not what you believe. Or sometimes we'll say, hey, this decision you're getting ready to make, if you make that, will you be playing to your negative tendency? Oh, yeah. Well, I got a whole story over here that says don't do that, right? You've been doing that your whole life. Don't make another one of those decisions. That's what I did. Seven times I did that. I couldn't see it. And every time I'd say, oh, God, well, I ain't doing that again. Well, 
I just kept doing it. And I couldn't see it. Okay, so then, once we know I'm not playing to my negative tendencies, if you are, stop, don't make the decision. Hey, does this decision I'm thinking about making, does it undergird my future goals and dreams? Does it get you where you wa wanna go? Because if it doesn't, maybe, maybe you shouldn't make this decision, right? Kind of obvious, I know, but it's not. And then, if it doesn't jive with what you believe and with the faith and with our values, if you can't be true to Christ and to what it means to be a fully devoted follower of His and make this decision, maybe you ought to not make... And then, once we have all that, we write across this, what's the wise thing to do? And there's usually three options. One very common option is, hey, you know what? You don't know enough. There's information here that you, you simply, this is what you think the circumstances are, but there's some other issues here that you hadn't thought of. When you have six eyes on a decision instead of two, wisdom and age, let's just say I'm doing one here at Dennis, and I'm, I'm doing one here with, with um, Mike, and we're doing a, it's not just me thinking about my decision, it's their lives and experiences as well. Am I going to get some wisdom from Dennis? Yeah, his hair is grayer than mine, right? <laughs> He, he's been places I hadn't been. Same thing with Mike. Okay, they're looking and they're saying, hey, Witty, you, there's a question you haven't considered yet. Okay, we need that. That's the brilliance of being the body of Christ living in community with each other. And so we make sure we have all the necessary information to make a decision. You will never have all the information to make one. But there is certain necessary information. If you don't have it, you can't possibly make a wise decision. Stop and get the rest of it. Wait. That's a wait. Or if you're playing to your negative tendency, stop. Don't do it. Or, hey, you're not playing. Undercurred your future goals and dreams. We believe in the thing that's driving it. If God's leading you to do that and your spouse is in agreement with you, go. And, and you've made a wise decision. Okay. To be involved in <clears throat> the, the kingdom of God and the movement, it's the day in and day out decisions that we make that determine the path of our life. And so to live wisely, we have to learn how to make wise decisions. I just can't tell you how many people you're working with that just time and again and again and again make a bad decision. How deep can you dig the hole and still get out? You know, there comes a point where you just it's a dark hole and you can't see a way out. And this is designed to help you live wisely. It's based on story and relationship with other people. Okay? Now, we're not talking Bible story in here, but it's a form of story. I think Bible story informs this, but I haven't, I haven't consistently used it. So, uh, but it is story, and it's your story. It's a way to use your story. Okay, um, a second thing that I want to show you, um, is I want to show you a thing called life group. And I think more of you have, this is not on your notes, so you might want to write them in somewhere. Life group is another application to your story. One of the things you're going to find is that in the Sunday school level, we can talk about the stories of God and, you know, talk like we, at the levels we normally do. We can get a little more honest than we, normally. there's going to come a point where people aren't going to talk below a certain level. Journey Partner Group is a safe place to talk at a deep level. Life Group is also a safe place to talk at a deep level. So probably your churches don't have these. You might, but you may not. And so... Life group is another one of those. Life groups can, for me, they're, they're, never, they're almost never on S Sunday. They're not competing with other church activities. Uh, yeah, they meet in third spaces, you know, places you're already going to go and be and do anyway. And it's not something that goes on forever. You know, they have a beginning and an end. And when the group says, hey, we're done, we're done. And it's okay to be that way. And, and people who've never been in a group might actually like something like this be, in the sense that they don't feel like they have to stay in it forever. Okay? 
So when they're tired of it, when the group's tired, it can stop. Now, in the first session, what you do is, is you do the, you do introductions through places, uh, people, and uh, events, and decisions, right? And you've seen these enough time now. What you're doing is just saying, hey, tell me one, tell me, tell me the, the most significant place you lived in your life. And we go around the group. And this group can be as many as you want to have. Normally, I think it would be probably six or less. It gets too big. It takes too long. But this is a smaller group. Tell me a place where you lived. Tell me the most important person in your life that you think shaped your life the most. Tell me the most significant event that you're willing to tell at this point, right? And tell us an important decision that you've made. And each one of us goes around and kind of does that. And what we do in the first meeting, we just get to know each other. But this is, on, you know, this is, but I tell you, first time we did this in my life group, <laughs> uh, we had one of our guys, second week we met, he went to tears over this question right here. It brought up a raw moment in his life, in his story, that we haven't, he hasn't told yet. We haven't told his story yet. It brought it up, and it's, it's, there's pain associated with that. This guy's a former Marine. Okay. <laughs> this is real. Okay, the second week, then what you do is, is you begin to tell your story. And I would suggest that you take turns now each week. You don't tell them all at once, like in Journey Partner Group, you take turns. And you tell your story, and you go first. Then, once everybody's told their story, then what we're doing is we're continuing. We're, this helps us get to really know one another. Ish, things come out. We're not necessarily trying to solve these. If somebody has an issue here, that's maybe for a different lunch for you and that person to work on their life, or if you have a recovery ministry in your church, you could send them to that, or if they need maybe to see a counselor, you could send them to that. Then there are a series of questions in life group, and this is the questions. Where, this week, because these normally would meet weekly, where were you closest to God this week? Where were you closest to God this week? That's the first one. The second one is where was your faith challenged? And what are you struggling with? Okay, Erica, this could really work with your, the lady, you know, the girls you're hanging out with. Okay, even if it, so if they don't have faith, just leave that off. What are you struggling with? Okay. This is a time for people to say, who've told their story, I'm still struggling with this issue. I I'm not over this yet. And the group gets to work on that. This is where, if maybe you're trying to help somebody who's struggling with an issue, remember we had these issues over here, and we said, we're going to learn a story that attaches to these issues, this would be a place where you could say, you know, there's this story in the scripture I remember, and, I, and it's helped me, and so you tell it to help them. That's where this would take place right there, okay? The third question is, what are you reading in the Bible? <coughs> what or where are you reading in the Bible, and what, is, what do you feel like the Holy Spirit's telling you to do? What are you reading in the Bible, and what do you feel like the Holy Spirit's telling you to do? This encourages people to be having a quiet time. Okay? This encourages people to be open and honest. Intimacy in your relationship. This asks about your walk with God, the first one. All right, is there anyone that you need to forgive? Is the next question. Anyone you need to forgive? Is there anyone you need to make amends to? Anyone you need to forgive? Anyone you need to make amends to? Is there someone you've harmed and you need to go to them and make it right with them? This works on relationships with people. If you, maybe you carry guilt over something here, it helps people deal with areas of guilt in their life. All right? Then... The next question is, 
Hey, are you erecting any idols in your life? You got any idols? Is there anything creeping up on you? Are you spending too much money on something? Are you giving too much time to something? And it's stealing away your attention from not only God, but just from whatever God cares about in the world. Uh, other people in your life, the mission that he's called us to be on, the movement he called us to be a part of. And then the last question is, how can we pray for you? How can we pray for you? Now, here's the really cool thing about a life group. And Mark, I think you're going to love this as a minister, but anybody can do this. It takes almost no training to do this. The only, the only thing is, is, is people have to learn how to tell their story. That's the only thing. But these questions, anybody can lead it. Anybody can do it. You don't have to prepare to get ready to do the life group. You just show up and you talk about your lives together. And, and it is, for that reason, it is so reproducible. Okay? So this is another, a different, this is not as complicated as Journey Partner Group. Um, but, and, you know, my thought is, is a group like this, maybe it goes on for eight weeks and then you're done. And if the group wants to keep meeting, fine. But it has a life and it runs its cycle and you're done. And nobody needs to feel guilty about that. You don't have to keep this thing going. Journey Partner Group goes for five, six weeks, you're done. That works in our culture because people don't want to make long-term commitments. But something significant happens and relationships are built and who knows what all is going to get shared between your life and their life and the Word of God, you see? So these are ways to bring people together. All right, any questions? Of, yeah. Both those uh, processes include tell your story. You trained us in two days to tell. How do we get that? Do, we, do you try to tell, train them to tell the story at that detail that you trained us? Yeah, I want them, I want everybody to get these things right here. And you just, what you do is you just say, get a piece of paper at home and put places, people, events, decisions, and then start writing down all the places you lived. So you, you get them to do that prior to telling me much. Like, Before they're going to tell their story. Okay. Yeah. They don't have to do it, because remember, in life group, you're going to tell your story. If there's four of you, you're going to take four weeks to tell it, Right. Whereas in Journey Partner Group, you're going to take four hours and all tell it right there together. So you have to give them that process ahead of time. And then you go first, and so they get to see what it looks like, the end product. Can you show them your chart? Yes. Okay. Yet yeah, when you tell your story, you should graph it, and everybody should have a copy of it. Just like I graphed mine in front of you. That's what you should do. Do what I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The questions then, once we've done the introduction, week one, we've all told our story, week two, three, four, then you go with these questions. And even week one, week two, you might do a, hey, how could we pray for you, you know, as you're getting to know each other? How can we pray for you is always a good way to end the group. And then, you, and then what I do is I just have everybody pray for one another, mm -hmm. you know. Pray for what you, the person you want to pray for. You feel something for that, pray for it, and it builds it builds community and camaraderie and support. Okay, so in, in terms of this, these three days together, your story and God's story and why it matters. Both of these are your story things. This one has a place for it to have God's story in it. But not preaching it, people, right? It's helping, it's sharing. Hey, something I learned or a story from the Scripture that reminds me of, and we're encouraging one another through the stories of Scripture.